Hey everyone, it's Tim Holtz and I'm here at scrapbook.com and I'm excited to share with you a lot of unique differences between Distress Ink and Distress Oxide. I get asked that question all the time. What makes these inks different? So I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks to kind of explain the whole properties of both of those products. Now, Distress Ink and Distress Oxide, these are ink pads, but they're very different. One is a dye-based ink, the other is a pigment-based ink. But it's also a fusion because Oxide also contains a little bit of dye, so I wanna demonstrate how those properties actually affect the overall outcome, whether you're stamping or doing backgrounds. Now these inks traditionally come in a three by three size ink pad. Distress inks though also come in a mini size. And these are great for travel because you can use these, you can fill up a tin with a lot of different colors. They're great for stamping or doing backgrounds, but because of the formulation, they can live in that little one by one ink pad. Distress oxides, however, cannot be used in that little mini ink pad. Not yet, anyway. The chemists at Ranger are still working on that, but for right now, we're going to really demonstrate both of the, what I call, regulation size ink pads. So, overall, you can see that when I remove the lids of both of these, they both have that felt layer, and that's what's really cool about this ink pad. Usually, when it comes to a pigment ink pad, you have a squishy foam but both of these are the same dense felt. And that's really what I like because I think they give a much crisper detail when it comes to working with stamps. Now you can see right away when I take the lids off that they look different right on the surface. The dye, that of course is going to be translucent. We're gonna see through that. The oxide that has that pigment layer, that's going to give us some kind of opaque properties. And so I'll just share with you some of the color swatches so you can visually see how they differ. So here we're going to start with the dye, the Distress Ink side, and you can see this on watercolor cardstock, that white paper. And you can also see what that color does when we use it on darker surfaces like craft paper. And you can see that that dye is really impacted by your background, whether you're using brown paper or blue paper or any colored cardstock, you really need to be careful when it comes to working with dyes. Now when it comes to working with oxide, oxide has this really cool ability to oxidize when it gets wet. So you start getting this white kind of hazy film over the top, that is watercolor cardstock. Now that is that same color on craft. So you can see right away that when you put it on that darker surface, we still get that pigment property coming through and we can see the color. And that holds true with all of the other colors, whether we're dealing with reds, you can see here how fire brick becomes really, really cool on that background. Even when you put it on craft, you get that oxidized layer. But as we go through, I love all these colors. Crack pistachio, one of my favorites. You can see on the watercolor, there is the craft and then there is your oxide version. So we get that little bit of that creamy milkiness, but look how it really illuminates on that darker paper. So let's kind of take you through and show you how this all comes to life, all right? So I'm gonna start with two different papers. We're gonna work with a white cardstock and a craft cardstock. Now, I will tell you that when it comes to working with papers, you really wanna play around with different kind of papers. Not all papers are created equal, and some papers really absorb your color a lot more than others. So play around with that. If you're not having much luck with getting it to react or getting it to blend, change up your paper. I prefer to work with Distress Watercolor cardstock or any type of craft cardstock. So let's take both of those inks. We've got our dye inks, there's a couple of different colors here, and our oxides, and we're gonna kind of compare both of them. So I'll start just with the Distress ink, and I'm just going to rub this direct because I think it's really important that you kind of get the visual impact of the color. So there is our dye on watercolor, and there is our dye on craft, okay? Right away, as I mentioned, you're gonna see that that color is really impacted. And even if we went into something like green, like a cracked pistachio, there again, you can see how nice that color shows up on white cardstock. It'll still show up a little bit, but certainly not that same color when you're working on something dark. And again, whether this is craft or blue or black, it's always going to impact that dye ink a little bit different. Now let's go into the oxide. The oxide, because it is a fusion of dye and pigment, we're still gonna get that nice color, that color that really coordinates with our dye ink. But because it's got some pigment in there, when I apply it to something dark, you're going to see that it really shows up, almost like a chalk ink, but keep in mind, oxide doesn't contain any chalk at all. It really does some cool properties. And I love the ability to get it to show up on really any surface that I wanna stamp on, whether it's going to be light or dark. There's our cracked pistachio, and there it is on craft. So just visually, when you look at these, you can see that there is a complete distinct difference between working with your Distress dye inks and your Distress oxide. 
So let's talk about reaction with water. And that's one of the key features when it comes to working with any distressed product, whether it's ink or oxide, is their unique ability to react with water. And both of these, whether it's distressed ink or oxide, they react differently. So I'm just going to take that ink again and I'm going to swipe it directly onto a white cardstock. This is going to be watercolor. And we'll go over here on craft just so you can see it. And craft is going to be more porous. So you'll see even how that reacts a little bit differently. I'm going to do the same thing with oxide. I'm just gonna rub that on there on both surfaces. So just when you apply it dry, you can see the different colors, of course, but let's react it with water. Here I'm going to use a distress sprayer. And the cool thing about a distress sprayer is the fact that it is a spray bottle that has a, an ability to mist or the ability to splatter if I slowly squeeze the trigger. So here I'm just going to do that, spray and splatter. And the reason I like to splatter is you can see those bigger drips of water actually get that ink to move differently. But right away you can see that Distress actually wicks when it gets wet, which means it spreads across the surface. That's what makes it so cool. But right away between the ink and the oxide, you can see that opacity really start to show up because of the pigment. And you can see here that it's starting to oxidize on that craft surface. Now you can let these air dry, or you can go in with a heat tool and we can dry these. Now I really like a heat tool. I really like this one from Ranger simply because it doesn't blow any of my inks or mediums. If you have an embossing gun, you may wanna stay a little bit further away. Otherwise, if you get too close, the high speed of the fan is going to blow that ink. So this is why I love working with a craft tool when it comes to drying my inks. Now again, you don't have to dry this with a heat tool. You can let it air dry. It will do exactly the same thing, but this is just gonna speed it up. Very impatient crafter. So right there we can see that this is dry most of the way. I can go in just with a cloth or a paper towel. I can blot up any of that excess ink from my background if I want. But take a look at that. You can see here, especially on watercolor cardstock, that's what I love about that, is that it really blends beautifully on that type of paper. And you can see my oxide creates that oxidized layer and reacts because of that dyeing pigment. So both are cool, just depends on the effect that you want. But take a look at craft. Now craft, even though this color is going to show up, because this is a different type of paper, it doesn't give that movement to ink. So that's what I mentioned at the very beginning that test it out on different types of papers to see what type of movement your inks are gonna create. One of my favorite things to do with ink, of course, is blend, whether I'm blending a background or going around the edge of a project. So here I'm just going to start with a piece of cardstock and I'm going to take a mini blending tool. And a mini blending tool is a wooden handle that has uh, this hook tape on the top. And then we're just going to take a piece of blending foam. And blending foam has this unique sponge some people might think it's like a cosmetic sponge. It isn't because it's not designed to actually absorb any of the medium. It also has this really unique fabric backing that when you pounce it right on top of that blending tool, it's just going to stay on there and that's going to allow me to blend. Now, when we work with this, we're just going to take the tool itself, rub it across the surface. We wanna make sure that we get ink on there, but you can see that this foam really doesn't absorb a lot of that ink. It just kind of sits on the surface. That's by design. Now here's some tricks when it comes to blending. First thing, we never wanna start the tool directly onto the paper. If you do that, you're going to end up leaving a mark and that's really difficult to blend out. The trick to this is to actually start off of your surface, slightly angle the tool off of the edge of your paper because if I go flat, there again, I'm going to kind of create a little drag onto my paper. So if I just start on that angle, I'm just gonna work in a circular motion and I'm just going to use the ink that's on that surface. And whether you're working on a craft sheet, which is what I'm working on, or any type of nonstick surface, that's going to allow you to pull that ink from the surface onto your paper. And if you want it further in, well, simply make larger circles. And that's just gonna to continue to blend. And there's a lot of ink on here, believe it or not. So we can continue to blend all the way down our surface just to get that ink on there. And if you decide that you want another layer, well, simply go back, same rules apply. Start off the edge, Start out with just those small circles and then just increase. And I'm not using a lot of pressure. You can, you can use more pressure if you want it to be a little bit more intense once you have a layer down, but that's how easy it is to blend with Distress Ink. Now Distress Oxide, that's a game changer. Because it has that dye and pigments, a lot smoother to actually get a much nicer blend on the background. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna change my foam, just gonna peel that off. Now blending foams are washable and reusable, so you can simply Wash this out with soap and water and you can reuse it for other colors or other mediums. I'm just gonna take another piece of foam, place that down, and we'll go into the oxide. So I'm just gonna flip this around. And we're just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to swipe this right across, start off the edge, and I'm going to blend. But you can see because of that dye and pigment, 
getting a lot more ink on my surface, which is nice. That's going to allow me to kind of take that color and really blend that out. So simple. Now, same thing, if I happen to take my oxide and I start here and leave a mark, you can see it doesn't leave nearly as harsh of a mark as the dye, but it will actually allow me to blend over it, which is a pretty cool trick when it comes to blending with your Distress Oxide. Next, we're going to emboss. And yes, you can emboss with both Distress Ink or Distress Oxide. Either one will emboss great. And whether you're working on different colors of paper or cardstock, I wanna share some tricks when it comes to using these with embossing powders. Now, ink or oxide, remember, these are going to be your colors. So I prefer when I'm embossing with Distress to use a clear embossing powder. This way I can see the color of ink that I'm stamping with. For this demo, I'm just going to use the oxide. And so I have a stamp just on my stamp platform and I'm going to ink it up. I want to use that pressure. You can kind of hear it. I really am fairly aggressive when it comes to inking up a stamp. I want to press down several, several times. Some people swipe and they're a little gentle. I want to make sure I've got ink on my stamp. Then I'm simply going to take that, turn that over. It's a bit good pressure. You really want to make sure that we have a nice impression. I'm just going to take that, move this off to the side. And I like to work on a piece of scrap paper. This way I can take my embossing powder and generously apply it. This is going to go back all the excess. So you might as well just go in and really cover that image. Then I'm just going to take this, pick this up, give it a little tap. You don't necessarily need to flick. You just need to tap that and you can see that that image is covered in powder. We'll put this back in the jar. Just pick that up, just put that off to the side. Otherwise, well, I'm gonna make it go everywhere. And put that right on there. And we'll talk about embossing. This is a great trick when it comes to doing any type of embossing. Whether you're using a craft tool or an embossing gun, if you can lift the surface off of the actual working table, that's going to allow heat to pass through your paper. And that's going to emboss in half the time, but it's also going to keep your paper from getting really curled up. So I can be very close, start heating that, and look at that. You can see how that color is coming through. Great detail, great color great dimension simply by using my Distress inks or Oxide for embossing. So there are so many things you can do with Distress ink and Distress Oxide, and another cool one is using it for watercolor. So with the ink pads, of course, there are re-inkers, and these inkers are designed to refill your ink pad. So we have one for Distress ink, that's going to be your translucent dye, and of course there's a re-inker for Distress Oxide. Now the tools that you're going to need for watercolor, of course, are going to be a waterproof permanent ink pad. It could be any brand that you like as long as it's going to be waterproof and permanent. And they'll usually tell you that right on the label or the lid of that. And then water brush. I love to use a water brush. You can certainly watercolor with a paintbrush and water, but why when you have a water brush? So the thing about a water brush, there's different types and different styles. I like the detailer because this has a really detailed point to it, and this is going to be a self-feeding water brush. Once you refill uh, this barrel with water, it's just going to continuously feed the water. Another style of water brush, of course, is a flat water brush. And this one's really cool because this will allow me to do blended backgrounds if you like to do skies or any type of sunset themes. But this one also allows you to remove this top. I can just grab this barrel. I'm just going to snap it off. And you can see that that extends those bristles to make a large round water brush. So either way, and this is just going to snap right back on and we can use it. But for the demo, I'm just going to show you the detailer. Now what I've done is I've taken the reinker. So let me just kind of clear this up just a little bit. Just move this off. Now the reinkers I've actually used in an ink palette. An ink palette's really nice because this is sold empty, but it has a hinge lid that's going to protect your ink from getting dirty or dusty. What I've done is this half, I've just gone in with different colors of Distress ink and actually done just one little drop of ink in there. The oxide, of course, is this half. Now the oxide, you have to shake this reinker because remember, that's that dye and pigment. I need to make sure this is mixed up before I put that drip of ink into the palette. Now, once you've applied your ink into the palette, the ink will never dry in that palette. You can leave it for weeks, months, years, and anytime you go and put a wet brush into it, it's going to react, all right? So let's do a little bit of watercoloring. I'm not gonna color the entire thing. I'm just gonna demo a little bit so you can see the difference when it comes to watercoloring with either one. So I'm just gonna start with my brush just to make sure that there's some water going on in there. And I'm just going to go in and dip this. Now, if you're doing a set, you can label these colors. You can write around here with a permanent marker. I just like to be surprised. I can pretty much gauge which color is which, but I'm just gonna share that when you're going in and coloring, take a look at that. 
right? We can add that watercolor right there and you can see how that blends. And I, I plan on cutting this out anyway, so a lot of times I'll work with a larger piece of paper so I can see what colors I wanna work with. You can even kind of double dip in different colors if you wanna create your own little blends. Either way it works. Now cleaning a water brush, I like to clean just on a craft sheet just to clean that off. I don't like to work on a paper towel or a cloth, otherwise it will absorb water out of your brush. All right, easy enough. So let's just go in and pick up a little bit of that color. Go in, blend that a little bit. Clean that. Maybe if I want to go into a different color, I can pick that up. And just pull that color in. Pretty simple, right? And you can go around and you can fill this in and you can blend this however you like. But let's talk about coloring with oxide. That's where it gets really interesting. Remember, distress oxides are reactive with water and they oxidize when they get wet. So here, take a look when I actually go in and touch that wet brush right into that oxide. You can see it oxidize right on the brush. Now when you go in and you add that color, look at that, it's almost like paint, but it's still an ink and it gives you that really great fluid look. And we can do both. So here I can go in and I can pull out a little bit of that oxide and I can always go back into my ink and I can pick up some color there. Blend a little bit here just to kind of uh, muddy that up, create a nice little distressed look. And I can blend both if I want. So here I'm going to get just that little mix, that little blend of not only the dye, but also that pigment of watercoloring with Distress Ink and Distress Oxide. So I hope you learned some of the cool tips and tricks when it comes to working with Distress Ink and Distress Oxide. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happy crafting!